Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently, we are in the 7th module of our Anson Machine Learning course and this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. So, the first model which we have worked on was a linear regression model and the second model which we will be dealing with is the logistic regression model and in the previous video, I have explained to you what is the intuition behind a logistic regression model and what are the advantages and disadvantages of a logistic regression model and in this particular video, let's discuss about what is the math behind a logistic regression model and how does a logistic regression model predicts our label values like 0 or 1. So this will be the agenda for today's video. So let's get started right away. So I have explained uh, this in my previous video. I'll just give you a quick recap. So a logistic regression model uh, curve would look something like this. So you can call this curve as a sigmoid curve or an S-shaped curve. So this is the example of a sigmoid curve. And uh, uh, we will take the x-axis value as generally is it and uh, your y-axis value will be y-cap values and your y-cap values will range from 0 to 1. So this is where your uh, y-cap values lies between 0 and 1 and your z values can uh, range from negative values to positive values and let's I'll explain you why we get this kind of a curve and what is the significance of this and now let's try to understand what is meant by this y-cap and z and so on. So this is how the formula of a sigmoid uh, function looks like or uh, the equation of a sigmoid curve looks like it's y cap is equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus z so this y cap value depends on the uh, value of z okay so this is uh, the relation of the sigmoid function and now we need to know what is this z so z is nothing but z is equal to w dot x plus b which is similar to the equation of a straight line which is uh, y is equal to mx plus c right where m represents the slope and the c represents intercept and we generally uh, instead of slope and intercept we use weight and bias as our notation and we can write the equation of the line like this so wx plus b which is equal to a, a, a line equation or a linear regression equation so we have discussed about the linear regression in the previous video which is similar to this okay so once you find this value of z using this weight value bias value and x value you can plug in the values of z in this particular equation in order to get y cap where uh, your y cap will be the probability that y is equal to 1 so whenever you are uh, doing or whenever you are working with logistic regression in most of the cases you are trying to uh, predict binary classes say for example you are, you will be trying to predict whether the output will be 0 or 1 or an yes or no answer like uh, if a person has any art disease or not so you are just predicting some classes or uh, it can be whether a news is a real or fake so there will be two classes in most of the cases which is called as a binary classification problem and the one label uh, will be given the label one let's say that if a news is uh, fake then we can call it as y is equal to one and if uh, news is real then we can say that y is equal to zero so we just label whether the news is a real or fake so we will do this in uh, all the binary classification problem and y cap is nothing but what is the probability that y is equal to one Say you uh, you get the y, -x, y cap value as 0 0.8. That means uh, there is a 80 percentage chance that your y cap value is uh, 1. So which means there is a 80 percentage chance that your news is fake. So that is meant by this. And uh, let's say we get the y cap value as 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 represents there is only a 20 percentage probability that your news is uh, fake. So we can say that it is a real news. So this is how we interpret this. And uh, we generally take this 0.5 as the midline. If your y cap value is greater than uh, 0.5, then we take the y value as 1. If your uh, y cap value is less than 0.5, then we take uh, the y cap value as uh, 0 okay so if it is less than 0 0.5 it's 0 if it is greater than 0 0.5 it you will get uh, the uh, label as 1 okay so this is meant by this uh, sigma and function and y cap and uh, you can also you know instead of writing that probability that y is equal to 1 you can write this uh, particular statement in in terms of probability so p represents probability here we can read this particular line as y cap is equal to probability that y is equal to 1 for a given value of x okay so where x is our input feature say uh, we are predicting whether a person has a uh, art disease or not so in that case we will have to uh, you know we have to give some features so features can be uh, what is the age of a person and uh, whether that person uh, doing some good amount of exercise or not so we will have several features and our model will predict whether the person has any art disease or not based on these features so these uh, features are called as input features and we generally represent input features as x so you you can have one input feature or you can have 10 input features or you can have hundred input feature and it differs based on the data set that we have so once we have this uh, input features we can plug in those values in this particular equation to get z and we can substitute the value of z in this sigmoid equation to get the value of y cap which will lie between 0 and 1 and then we have the weight value so w represent weights and uh, i have already made a video on weights and bias which is a, a vast topic so if you are not aware of, of this uh, weights and bias you can uh, 
go to the sixth module of my channel or else i'll give you the link of uh, this weights and bias video in this particular video description you can check that out so uh, weights so one main thing that you need to remember is that you will have the number of weights equal to the number of input features so let's say that you have uh, 10 input features in that case uh, you will have 10 weight values whereas bias is a single real number it is a single value whereas weight can be an array uh, which contains as many number of input features as there let's say that we are we are having a data set as i've told you where we are trying to predict uh, whether a person has heart disease or not so in that case we will have the input features as age uh, the uh, bmi of a person and so on let's say that there are about uh, 10 input features so you will have uh, for that particular model you will have 10 weight values if you have 100 input features you will have 100 uh, weight values each one for each column or each feature okay if you have only one input feature and one target variable then you will have only one weight value so that is one main thing that you need to note which i have uh, mentioned here okay so you can take note of this and b is the bias value so i uh, recommend you to watch the weight and bias uh, video if you are not sure about these steps okay so that is meant by this uh, w and b and then y cap is equal to sigma of z so sigma is uh, z is nothing but this particular equation so it is just a short form of writing this equation so we know that we can write an equation like y is equal to f of x right where uh, we can say that y is uh, you know y is a dependent uh, value on x or uh, y as the function which is dependent on x similarly we can say that y cap is equal to uh, sigma z which uh, where sigma represents a sigmoid function which is given by this particular equation so i hope everyone is clear up to this point so y cap is uh, the value which we are trying to predict whose values lies between 0 and 1 and it will be our uh, label and it is basically the probability value so now what happens is when we train our machine learning model First of all, it's try to uh, predict or it, no, it not predict. It will try to find what is the optimum value for weight and bias. We cannot have the same weight and weight value and bias value in all the cases. So the weight value and bias value changes depending upon the data set that we have. So the model works in order to find what is the best weight value and bias value so that it can make accurate prediction. So this step is called as training the machine learning model. So this is the so-called learning process where it will try to find the parameters. So W and B are nothing but the parameters of the model. So it will try to find these models so once the model has fitted to the data and it has found the optimum uh, weight and bias value and now we will find the value of z and then we can find the value of y cap with that okay so we won't be going in detail about how we will find this weight value and bias value in this video but i will be explaining uh, that on you know how the machine learning model finds the weight value and the bias value in the next video where i will explain you this uh, using gradient descent so using gradient descent the model finds the optimum weight value and the bias value which we have uh, discussed in linear regression as well so there is a slight changes you know gradient uh, descent works in linear regression and logistic regression so we will discuss uh, that in the next video but just for now understand that weight value and bias value is uh, determined by the model using several steps using gradient descent and we will arrive at some optimum weight value and bias value okay and now we need to uh, substitute the values in these equations let's say that uh, we have we have some data set and we have uh, fitted our data set to our logistic regression model and it has found uh, the optimum value for weight and bias which can give you accurate prediction let's say that uh, weight value and bias value are 5 and 10 so let's say that weight value is equal to 5 and uh, bias value is equal to 10 and let's say that this particular example data set contains only one input feature so in that case you are uh, you will have only one weight value which is 5 and uh, you have uh, bias value as 10 so this is just an example value i'm not telling that this is the value we will get every time so that's not the case we are just taking some example value and uh, assume that we have trained our machine learning model and it has arrived at this weight value and bias value now what we can do is if we have the new data sets and if we have the new values for x we can substitute the value of x here and you will get the value of z for that particular new data point and once you uh, fill in the values in the z you will get uh, the y cap value which will lie between 0 and 1 so i'll manually show you how we can uh, calculate these values and this is what happens in the logistic regression model okay so let's try to do that so these are the new values that we have so previously we have trained with the data set uh, and our uh, logistic regression model has learned from it now we have the new data set and now we are going to discuss how the model finds the y cap value so it, it's just very simple we just need to plug in the values so we have two formulas the first formula is for z so first we have to find the value of z using this particular equation and then we need to find the value of y cap so let's take all the five values all uh, the x value and the y cap uh, x value so we have x is equal to minus 9 x is equal to minus 8 x is equal to 0 x is equal to 8 and x is equal to 9 so that is a very interesting thing that i'm going to tell you once we calculate all these values so it is a very important thing that you need to remember so let's see uh, what is that
So now just plug in the value of x in this equation and find the value of z. If we do that, you, we will get the values like this. So if you put uh, the x is equal to minus 9 in this case, you will get z is equal to 5 into minus 9 plus 10. And if you solve this, you will get 5 into 9 is 45, minus 45 plus 10 is minus 35. So it is very simple, right? A simple mathematics. And if you put x is equal to minus 8, you will get uh, z is equal to minus 30, minus 40 plus 10, which is equal to minus 30. And if x is equal to 0, your z value will be equal to 10. And if x is equal to 8, and and your z value will be equal to 50 and finally when your x value is equal to 9 your z value will be 55 so we have arrived at our z value and now we need to plug in this z values separately for each of these x values in this y cap equation which is the sigmoid function equation okay so let's do that so y cap is equal to 1 by 1 plus e power 35 so we have z value as minus 35 and if you substitute the value of z is equal to minus 35 in this particular equation this minus and this minus will be changed to a plus right so minus into minus is plus so you will get 1 plus e power plus 35 so that's what i have written here and uh, now let's calculate this uh, y cap value so you can just uh, go to your google chrome so just a second so i'll just show you how we can calculate this value Scientific. So you can just uh, search a scientific calculator online. So you will get this calculator, which is very useful for us in this case. So the equation that we have is 1 divided by 1 plus e power 35. Okay, so I'll just write this equation here. 1 divided by 1 plus e power. So for power, you need to give this x power y. So e power plus 35, right? So plus 35 is the value that we got. And your value will be... Uh, 6.3 and so on into e power minus 16. So this value is very very closer to 0. Okay, so it is e power minus 16. So it is very very closer to 0 and hence we can say that uh, your y cap value will be 0. Okay, so it will be very close to 0. Hence we can write it as y cap is equal to 0 and now let's calculate the same for uh, z is equal to minus 30 and when you put minus 30 here you will uh, get 1 plus e power plus 30 and when you do the same it will also be the similar case. So I'll just clear this. 1 divided by 1 plus e power plus 30. Again, this value will be very closer to 0. So e power minus 14 some number. So this is very, very close to 0. And then we have uh, the z value is equal to 10. So if you just plug in similarly the value of uh, z value here, you will get y cap is equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus 10. So this is very important because in the previous cases we had z value as a negative number whereas in this case the z value is plus number. So you will get 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus 10 and 1 power uh, 1 uh, sorry e power minus 10 is a very large negative number. Okay. So I'll, let me show you. So you will get the value closer to um, 1. So I'll just clear this. So let's write 1 divided by 1 plus e power 10 so uh, sorry minus 10 right so minus 10 is the equation that we have so e power minus 10 and the value you get will be very close to 1 so as you, as you can see here it is 0 0.999 and so on so we can write this particular value as 1 so that's what i have written here so whenever you have a uh, z value as negative, you will get the y cap value which is closer to 0 and whenever your z value is a large positive number, in those cases you will get the y cap as uh, 1 and if you do the same for uh, this particular equation here, uh, the z value is a very large positive number, right? So I'll just uh, show you this one alone. So this is actually a very good exercise for you. You can try other values as well. So 1 divided by 1 plus e power 50. Okay, so yeah, 1 power 50. Sorry, minus 50, I think. Yeah, it's one, uh, uh, 1 plus e power minus 50. Minus 50. And your value will be 1. So, the if similarly, if you try to find the y cap value for this particular z value, which is z is equal to 55, again, you will get the y cap value as 1. So, this is a very important thing that you need to remember. So, whenever you are having the z value as a large negative number, your y cap value will be closer to 0, which I have shown you using this particular equation. And whenever you are having a large positive number as the value of z, you will get a, a y cap value of 1. So, we can 
we can say that uh, we will get two labels as either zero or one. So this can be anything uh, depending upon the data set you have. It can be uh, whether uh, predicting whether a news is real or fake, where we can give the label as one for uh, fake news and zero for real news, and whether a person has diabetes or not. Uh, mm -hmm. Where like a person with diabetes, you can give the label value as one, and for a person without diabetes, you can give uh, uh, you know label value as zero and so on. So similarly, this is how you can use the sigmoid function which is basically the logistic regression. So logistic regression is built based on the sigmoid function. So you will uh, get these label values. So that is all about uh, the path behind the logistic regression. And uh, this is how it will find the Y cap values, which lies between zero and one. So this is not exactly zero, but it is very, very close to zero. When you have a negative number and when it is a positive number, it, the value will be very, very close to one. So we can say that uh, Whenever your uh, y cap value is greater than 0.5, you can say that uh, the y cap value is 1. And whenever it is less than 0.5, you can say that the y cap value or the label value is equal to 0. And we have already discussed, uh, uh, you know, what is the sigmoid function. And uh, using this uh, z, which is equal to wx plus b, we can derive this y cap value. Okay. So the important inference that you need to remember here is if z value is a large positive number, this uh, number will be very close to 0. So which we have seen before. So uh, if it is a large positive number, then uh, it will be e power minus z because like plus into minus is minus. So you will get a value. So e power negative some number uh, is, you know, very close to zero. So you will get one by one, which is equal to one. So you will get the y cap value as one. And whenever your z value is a large negative number, so that negative and this particular uh, negative before the z uh, will cancel each other and you will get a e power a uh, larger positive number and e power a large positive number will be uh, a very huge number. So that's what I have written here. 1 divided by 1 plus large positive number. So this large positive number is nothing but e power plus z and this is e power minus z and so on. So when you have a 1 divided by a very large number, your uh, value, your final value will be very closer to uh, 0 which we have uh, discussed before. So this is the important inference uh, that we need to remember and this is how our model can predict using the sigmoid function what is the y cap value where y cap is the probability of uh, whether you will you will uh, get a y cap value as 1 or 0. So 1 represents there is an 100 percentage probability that your y cap value is 1 and 0 means there is a 0 percentage chance that your y cap value is going to be uh, 1. Okay, so this is how we can uh, infer logistic regression function and uh, in the next video I'll explain you how we can find the loss function of a logistic regression model and how we can use that in order to uh, deduce the gradient descent for logistic regression. So it is slightly different from what we have seen in the linear regression case. And once we have done that, so we can move on to building a logistic regression model from scratch in Python. Okay, so that will be the next series of videos. And I hope you have understood all the things covered in this particular video. And I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.